First, I want to welcome everyone and thank you, especially for coming on this cold, drizzling night. And just to give you a little bit of a prelude, since this is our first of a series, we were incredibly fortunate. The National Endowment for the Arts did what I thought didn't actually ever happen. They called the hunter and said, we're looking at institutions who have capacity in cities that don't quite have the amount of saturation that we're hoping, and we're looking for them to develop a program series or something, and we'll give you money if you give us a proposal. So with that, we went to work. They came up with what we're calling the Art Plus Issues Series. They were really interested in community involvement, and if anybody knows any of our programs, you know that that's a big part of ours, not just building our community, but building, not just building the Hunters community, but building the whole Chattanooga community stronger. So the NEA series is a very simple idea that we think will have magnificent results. What's going to happen each of these nights is we are going to start with a brief discussion of a work of art, and we're just going to guide you through a little looking exercise to get you guys focused on what the art is about and tell you a little bit about the history. But then we're going to delve into how this relates to our world today. So if everyone can take just about 30 seconds to just stare at this piece, not the care of what you see, but also just spend some time with it. Because the ultimate goal, besides getting you engaged and involved and insight, insight into major issues, is to get you to, to look and to think about our art and art wherever you are. Because there's, of course, the artist's thoughts and the times of the artist. But your thoughts as a 21st century American? Um, now that all the shops have closed, the people that are kind of selling more informally, they don't necessarily have establishments. Now it's their turn to kind of come out, but it's night, so they're kind of doing the second shift sort of thing. These really kind of exotic pieces of furniture that are being reused. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they were once like really expensive, exotic well, pieces of furniture, kind of maybe like the way immigrants in our society reuse things that wealthier middle class people might want to just throw. Higher end. Higher end. And maybe Western, because um, low cut um, dresses and, you know, no head coverings. And this is called Allen Street. And the artist, George Lukes, was doing, essentially showing, Allen Street was and is a real place in the Lower East Side of New York City. And as many of you probably know, that's where a lot of the tenements house enormous, I mean, almost terrifyingly large numbers of recent immigrants, many of them of Jewish descent. There were, of course, other groups in there. And what they were doing was essentially living there. They were often working in what was rightfully called a sweatshop during the day. So they may have very well, I mean, we have no evidence of that, been sewing those kinds of dresses or other types of very hard, very long labor. They, they were a group very determined to do well by their families and to make ends meet to be able to stay in the U.S and to have a life that they weren't able to have in their home regions where they were facing violence and a lot, a lot of ethnicism and racism. I think if we asked um, Mr. Lewis to paint a, an image of today on the immigration level, I think it would definitely be um, La Latino immigration, as that's the issue on the forefront of many people's minds. Um, I think there would be diversity, like you said, um, because oh, I work at La Paz Chanuga, which is, um, I'll go ahead and get that uh, out, is a nonprofit organization, and we work directly with the Latino community here in Chanuga. And we see about 15, 1,500 clients a year. Um, we see Nicaraguans, we see Hondurans, um, people from El Salvador, Guatemala, everything. I um, wanted to know more about George Lukes, the artist, and so I looked up his information. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you guys. He was born, um, grew up in Pennsylvania to Central European immigrants. Um, when he was a boy, he moved to Southern Pennsylvania and near coal miners' families. And his parents, um, in the in the resources that I that I read, his parents kind of 
showed compassion to those coal miner families. And many say that that was a reason why he depicted some of his subjects. What do you think, if he says, if he's so strong about painting life as is, um, just as it is, the, the women in the streets, um, what do you think he would paint today as a, as a representation of immigrants, of immigration today? in Chattanooga. <clears throat> On a national level, we can start there, but then bring it home. What do you think it would look like? Construction, a whole crew of nothing but uh, immigrants. Mm -hmm. um, Country club workers. Mm -hmm. House workers. Would there be sadness? Would there be joy? Uh, on the construction job, I've, I've seen this. Uh, individual and a uh, lot of banter going on, and I didn't, I didn't see any tragic expressions. You look at Hispanic families, and you look at, <coughs> within that, there's such a strong sense of family, and I see lots of joy and lots of positive, you know, if you were looking at that specifically, but if you compare that to the opportunities, you know, in our community or nationwide, it would, you'd still have the divide, and I, I'm, I assume that's what's being depicted here. Mm -hmm is that there is that, that huge divide of opportunity, and it's true in every facet of our society. Something that, that strikes me about this and the, and the analogy to our current situation, if we accept that the upstairs is the remove the upper class kind of place where the mysterious figure is headed up there and is presumably part of the privileged class, removed by the stairs and the elevation from the lower class, the immigrants there, well then, I think that is exactly the way it is now because I think that, that the main uh, population of Chattanooga is totally, or nearly totally, removed from the immigrants. One of the things when you said um, that there's such a separation between uh, Chattanooga at large and, and the Hispanic community, to me that's a tragedy. And that's one thing that La Paz, it's one, one of the reasons why we exist, and part of my job, <laughs> um, is to br bridge that gap, whether it's to social service organizations, whether it's to creative arts um, businesses, organizations, uh, whether it's to soccer games, whether it's to opportunities like this. And I would see, like, I kind of saw the other side of this. I guess I was seeing, like, the, there's a Guatemalan uh, store on Main Street, so it's the Guatemalan and all And I was seeing, like, I see, I see that when I see this picture. Um, so I see, you know, I don't see the divide. I see a marketplace, you know, booming economic. I see them, you know, buying stuff, selling stuff. The, the Guatemalteca has got 20 cars in the front every Friday night. You know, every day you go, you can't find a perfect place. I mean, I, I see it as as vibrancy and bringing a, a, a different culture and kind of but where does the second part fit in that? I mean, I understand that uh, analogy to the entire yeah. first level. I mean, I think it's there. I, I just think it's um, it's not necessarily on it's the not second a, floor. It's another business somewhere else. It's got a different yeah. Product. yeah. I, I think yeah. I think our second floor <clears throat> is is off of Main Street. Curious if you had done the same presentation <clears throat> in, at La Paz with. Um, you know, 50 of your clients or 30 of your clients. What would the what would the, the tenor of the response compare and contrast, I guess, mm -hmm. with, with this experience here? I'm curious to know how. How our clients would respond to yeah, it? Yeah, to the exercise. Gosh. <laughs> Do you have an answer for that? <laughs> <laughs> There's no wrong answer, I'm just curious. That's a good question. Um, I don't think many of them feel that they're that, um, that they are pushed under or, or that they're um, lower class necessarily. I mean, I, I, I think that they, like Roy was saying, you know, some of the households that we've gone to, we may feel like, oh my gosh, you know, this is horrible <coughs> conditions, we need to fix it. But they are, are um, coming from a place that um, they had no food, or they had, you know, their, their children weren't able to, to eat. So for them, you know, if they have a roof over their head, if they have running water, if they have education, which is huge, if they have education for their children, they're living the dream already. I mean, so I don't know if they, I mean, I, they definitely can see, you know, that there are people that have more, and I don't think that they, they saw that where they come from. 
because it, you know everybody just kind of has the same thing where they, where they come from. But I mean, here I think there's there's the divide, but they don't necessarily um, see it as 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 much as you and I do. Um, and they're strivers. That's how they got here. Yeah. Strivers are by nature optimistic. Well, I'm going to wrap us up. Lori has been wonderful. Can you please give her? And our biggest goal for this, I've said many big goals, but one was to get you guys talking. And thank you. You've been a tremendous audience, but really participants and partners in this, asking some amazing questions and really taking this to another level. I hope that your walkaways from this, of course, are to continue to come to these. Next week is about the environment and land by the River Gorge Trust, but also, and you can find all of them, by the way, on our website, but also, when you're looking around the world, look, really, really look. Don't jump to assumptions, whether it's out your window or most certainly at art. And, and think about what Lori shared with us. There are many resources that she and Stacy and others shared within our community. See if you can get engaged. See, see if you can learn more because there's there's a lot of hidden parts of our community that are living in joy, but are also living very separate lives. So thank you all very much and have a good evening. If you don't mind grabbing your red chairs and picking that up.